is Star Wars Day, and in celebration of that famous hero's journey that helped inspire me both as an author as well as my novel, I want to talk about my other favorite science fiction and fantasy novels that you can also read and hopefully also get inspired. Hello human lieblings, I'm Body, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. Today we're going to talk about books. In fact, we're going to talk about my favorite ones and because I am such a book hoarder, a lot of these I have in multiple languages, mostly English and German and I figured I'd show them to you. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad and everything in between. So a quick note. Uh, for those of you who are unaware of today being Star Wars Day, it is because it is May the 4th. And if you are familiar with Star Wars in English, uh, may the Force be with you. We, the Star Wars nerds like to play, you know, a little punny with that with may the 4th be with you. <laughs> of course, if you are familiar with Star Wars in German, like I have with uh, introducing our nephews to the amazing saga, it doesn't translate very well. May the force be with you in German is Möge die Macht mit dir sein. That's very hard to try to like make a pun with that with May the 4th. But I'm all, I'm also like 95% sure that uh, any Star Wars fan in Germany, like really hardcore Star, Star Wars fan in Germany are also aware of, you know, Star Wars Day. So ha happy Star Wars Day. I had thought about doing movies, but I'll do that another day. But I really wanted to take advantage of the fact that Star Wars was n not the only inspiration for me for the God Queen. Most of what inspired me were were books and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now disclaimer, I actually don't, for some of the books I may not own the German copy or I may not actually have a physical copy or you know what, I, you know how it works between ebooks and physical books. It's, there's a, there's a lot of options here, but uh, obviously I'm still going to show you what, what I have. The big thing is because the ones I have in German specifically, because they are actually very lovely and there's, they look so pretty on my bookshelf. I mean, how can I not buy them? So let's get started. The first one on my list is Alana, The First Adventure. Now I read this book when I was 12 uh, originally and I mean, she, Tamara Pierce is the reason why I want to write. And I think she's just, oh my gosh, she's just amazing. <laughs> um, the first story I ever wrote was like a, the summer after I read this book. So I was like 13. And it was about a young girl named Liren Edowa who wanted to be a dire knight. It was like almost like one to one to, to the story. But I mean, the whole Edowa family member who wanted to be a dire knight. If you've read The God Queen, you kind of know that some stuff has stuck, but that was like, that was it. That, that kind of remained. But this is a book, I mean, I highly recommend for young boys and girls to read because it's just such a great adventure and the world of Tortal. I mean like Tamra Pierce's world building is phenomenal. But this is just the first book in an entire series that is called The Song of the Lioness. And oh man, I just, I, I think I'm actually due for a reread so I may have to reread these. But so, I mean the, the covers of these are just gorgeous. And I mean, this is the German copy. This is the, the entire series in one book and the the funny thing is like when I was trying to look to see like what what Germany had in terms of of like book covers for the series the original ones were actually pretty hideous and I'll see if I can post them somewhere like on the screen there it was it was rather ugly I'm not gonna lie but I saw this one and I thought it was just so I just thought it was so lovely and so yeah of course I had to get it and my husband's like what is wrong with you why do you have so <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a book hoarder, man. I just I just can't I can't help it. So mm. Number two is Eye of the World. So this is the first book in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan I actually don't have the copy in German. Of course, if you look on Amazon Deutschland The German version of the book looks exactly the same Except obviously like with the German title the German title. Of this is Die Suche nach dem Augen dem Welt, right? Uh, Die Suche nach dem Augen der Welt Goodness gracious with the articles, man. <laughs> um, which is the search for the eye of the world, which yeah, that that works, that works. I mean, I, I, I don't know, for me, I just, I like the, 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 the I don't know, I, I just prefer the simplicity of the eye of the world. But yeah, that's just me. I love this because this was, you know, this is like, 
Lord of the Rings. And of course, I, lo I love Lord of the Rings. But this one was... Because Tolkien's writing is a lot... I would say it's, a, it's heavier, I would say. This is, I feel, a lot more um, relatable reading-wise. And you still have, like, I, I love, you know, journeyman stories with with a cast, with a full cast of characters. I feel like you're more likely to find, like, if you have a whole cast, there's going to be somebody in that cast that you like more than others. As opposed to, like, if you have one character and you either like them or you don't. But uh, I, I love, I love stories with major casts and I mean yeah this was I actually I started reading this when I was 15 and I did actually stop with Lord of Chaos which was book six I do need I, I need to go back and, and continue reading this because at, at that point in time I mean Robert Jordan was still alive and I we had no idea how many more books there was gonna be so that tells you how old I am <laughs> yeah I mean like the the New York Times the New York Times uh, blurb on this, that Jordan has come to dominate the world that Tolkien began to reveal. He's not lying. I mean, like, this kind of just takes... It, it focuses on the people themselves as opposed to, like, Tolkien with Lord of the Rings where, you know, you have the Council of Elrond and then he kind of, like, goes on this side tangent and tells you, like, a brief hi history of the elves and the dwarves and then comes back to the Council of Elrond, which is great in sense of world building, but in, in terms of plot and pacing, it sometimes Tolkien can be very slow as opposed to Robert Jordan that's not necessarily the case things go a lot faster and the fact that he had I mean, how, many, how many books guys it's like 12 13 books it's it's insane it's insane but like he inspired me to go big like even bigger than Tamara Pierce I mean like Tamara Pierce is like is young adult Robert Jordan is adult in terms of literature and oh man like it books like this like when you when you have fantastic characters and this this full three-dimensional world you it really it really makes a difference it really makes a difference and and you, you completely lose yourself in in books like these number three is dune dune oh i mean like in terms of space opera and hard science fiction i mean this is oh this is fantastic and the the german version of this is called the Wüstenplaneten, the desert planet, which is fitting. It's it's fitting because I mean, like, actually, since I haven't read it, I don't know what they would call Arrakis in the German version. Like, how would they would translate it? Would they just call it Dune, or did they call you know what I mean? Like, if any of you have read Dune in German, please let me know what is like the nickname of Arrakis in German. I would I would really love to know. So this uh, when. Frank Herbert wrote this. Um, he was actually doing a study on, like, what was it? It had to do with, like, the ability to allow vegetation to grow on in the desert. And he and he was doing this in, in like, the southwest, southwest United States. And through his findings, he created literally, like, this world where eventually, yes, Dune goes from desert planet to a vegetative planet and the science behind it is real and as as a scientist i i was a microbiologist for like a decade before becoming an author translator <laughs> um the this sort of thing like it just it really appealed to me when when i read it just because like it is one of the most you know it is one of the, the hard science fiction books that that didn't they didn't feel so heavy with me in terms of the hard science itself. I'm not always a big fan of hard science fiction, but of course this is like the epitome of perfection in sense of how it should be done. <laughs> and also what I do love about this is, is you know, like as the series progresses, it does talk about like the, cre you know, it, it does touch on the themes of the creation of religion and raising people up to the status of gods, which I very lightly touch upon in The God Queen. So like the, I mean, I, I don't, I don't take it to, to this level because I, I am no Frank Herbert, but I do loved the theme of, of idolizing heroes in stories to godlike levels and what people are willing to do in the name of set idols or gods or whatever. It's just, it's, it's, this is just the beginning of another amazing and deep three-dimensional world. So, yay, Dune. 
the next one is the golden compass this one actually when i read alana the first adventure like the friend that recommended that book to me also handed me this book at the same time and like i read them i remember it was right before so i was in sixth grade so i was 12 years old and this was right before either fall break or spring break i i don't remember but i mean it is literally like the writing style is literally night and day because i mean Tamara Pierce writes for young adult and this you know again I was 12 years old and this was at the time before young adult really took off at this point in time like when I mean took off I mean young adult in a sense of like the juggernaut in the industry that it is today the and and the reason why that happened was because of Harry Potter so <laughs> to date myself further when I was 12 I think only the first Harry Potter book was out maybe the second like I know the first one was definitely out because one of the girls at my lunch table had read it and was like obsessed with it but that was it you know like for us at that point young adult didn't exist at the same level that it did today however there was Tamara Pierce who I think is just again perfection but when I read this I I mean especially with this I mean this book is easy to pass off as young adult but once you get to like the third book or actually no okay when you get to the third book, which is Amber Spyglass, but I'll get to that in a moment. So, like, of course, you know, the whole trilogy of His Dark Materials is is a retelling of Milton's Paradise Lost. That's not necessarily something that a young child of 12 or 14, I was 14 when the golden uh, Amber Spyglass came out. And, yeah, the, the, the themes that it touches upon, it's not something that you necessarily understand at that point. Like, I remember feeling, like, the, the, the feelings that I went through reading it were very profound, but I was 14, I didn't necessarily have like the vocabulary or the complex understanding of what I was feeling. Though, to be fair, what was really interesting about uh, Amber Spyglass was there was essentially the moment in Lyra's sexual awakening. Um, it was, there was something about when I read it, I remember it was, it, I felt like I had missed something. And I actually felt very stupid for years. I was like, oh, how am I not smart enough to understand like what they're referring to? And it turns out that the American Publishing House took out the very line that described her sexual awakening, the sentence. And once I actually read the line, I was like, oh my God, no wonder I felt so stupid. Like I was not stupid. The fact that they took out the very important line to make that whole scene mean anything. Yeah, because they had to censor it because they were determined to package this series as young adult. And honestly, it's not. <laughs> looking back at this, you know, I, I'm in my 30s now. And looking back, this is not young adult, honestly. Like, I mean, yeah, you can read it. I mean, the first two books, and Subtle Knife is my favorite, by the way, because I love Will Perry. He's my, my favorite. He's my favorite. Um, The first two books, sure, but... Things really uh, take it up a notch with the third book and, and I think cements the whole trilogy as a non-young adult series. I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think? Those of you who have read it, I actually have the book series in German because the covers are also absolutely lovely. They're gold and a compass. Das magische Messer and das Bernstein Teleskop, which is so cool. Am I going to read these? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can see like... I mean, this you, the, the, the size is not too big. You see some of my other, other favorite novels. You see, like, the English version or the German version. It's, it's, it, the difference is a staggering. But, like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe one day, I feel, if I feel like rereading it, I'll actually, like, do the work and read it in German. But until then, I very much enjoy rereading these in English. So the next on my list, I don't have a physical copy, and I really need to get it because I just love it, is... The Snow Queen by Joan DeVinge. This is also a space opera that is just, oh my gosh. And there is no German copy of this. Not that I have seen. If there is, let me know because I would love to see the cover because if it's pretty, I'm totally going to order it. <laughs> um, the Snow Queen is, let's see. Oh. The Snow Queen is a science fiction or space opera retelling of The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. And it tells a story of... The Snow Queen, Ariane Road, who essentially is is in control of the planet Tiamat. They have this this tradition where every 150 years, like she's the Snow Queen, and then for the next 150 years, uh, there will be a Summer Queen. And the way Tiamat is set up is that you have 
on the north I think it's the northern pole but it's on the poles of the planet where it's very cold that's where the like more advanced cities take place and on the summer islands across like the rest of the planet they they're more like anti-technology and of course and the reason why the whole 150 years thing is because of the orbit of the planet uh for the 150 years of these when it's the summer like the age of summer uh the they're too close to the sun so the rest of the planet gets too hot so everybody even all the summer tribes move to the poles to this to the winter to yeah to the winter cities and so Ariane road wants to maintain control of her power she's been ruling for 150 years so she creates a clone within the summer tribe like the like, like very sneakily does it and this young woman named moon uh is kind of destined to become the summer queen but she has to like she goes on this like crazy adventure and of course she loses the love of her life to the snow queen and it's it's oh it's just so it's so amazing it's so amazing it's just um there is more to the series jody vinge actually didn't start writing any like this book came out i actually don't remember when the year it came out i'm gonna say like sometime in the 60s or, or the 70s and she didn't write the next book until like the late 80s early 90s so it was like a long time before she like revisited this world again and i i love this book so much i'm not quite i haven't read the other books because i'm not quite ready to go back i don't know but we'll see next book on my list is a court of thorn and roses now sarah j mass is my age and i re i mean i read her throne of glass series which i really liked and i actually appreciated more on a upon a reread like when i was getting ready for the last book kingdom of, kingdom of ash to come out but this book i was obsessed from day one i read this book uh on our honeymoon to new zealand and as soon as i finished reading it i reread it and then i read the next book a court of mist and fury as soon as i finished that i reread it now a court of wings and ruin the third book, I only read it once. It was, I enjoyed it, but the first two, I just, I just loved it. I love it. And this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, she, in terms, like her, her romance, especially with this, I absolutely love it and was very inspired in, in that sense, like the, what I would like to emulate myself. And I own, of course, in German, and this is the German copy and it's like massive behemoth. <laughs> it's awesome though. It's called Das Reich der Sieben Höfe, Dornen und Rosen. So it's the, the, what is it? The Kingdom of the Seven Courts, Thorn and Roses. So, interesting translation, but I just, I love this. And then the, 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 the jacket is actually see-through, which I think is super badass. Look at that, look at that. And I, I obsess over these things because... I, I formatted and designed the God Queen myself. So of course, like I, I look at, you know, the care that some of these publishing houses take to do something like this. And I just appreciate it because I think it's just, it's just brilliant how they do it. I want to do something like this. <laughs> so the next on my list is also an ebook. It is The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. I really love this book because the world itself is latino expired like inspired so as a half latina it was really awesome to make sure i don't have this glare that i kind of see myself granted i don't i don't consider myself like dark skin like elisa but you know latina is latina right so yeah i've reread this book so many times and of course you know tamra pierce gives her seal of approval how can i not right and i do actually own this book in german it's called der feuerstein but I, actually, this I, I will admit, I don't necessarily think that was that was well translated because it is in reference to the God Stone, which is in, in the book, but I can't remember. It's actually as far as I got reading it. I was actually reading this book out loud to my husband because I wanted him to enjoy this book with me. And also by reading out loud, uh, it would force me to slow down because I am a speed reader. And also to better my German because you know, I can, I can read quickly even in German, but to help me learn to pronounce certain words better or how you pronounce it, you know, like it's just better to read out loud. So uh, we would actually start reading this during our long three hour drives to and from like when we were still living in Uberlingen, but then I stopped. <laughs> I need to get back to it. Anyway, I highly, re I love, I love, and also the romance and the slow burning romance. Oh yeah, it's just, this is brilliant. Oh my gosh. I think I also need to reread this now. <laughs> Next on my list is Ender's Game. I don't know where my English copy is. I'm pretty sure one of our nephews has it. 
But to give you, just to give you an idea, like I have Speaker for the Dead. So the Ender's Game itself, this is the sequel to Ender's Game and the book itself is about the same size. And the reason why I'm bringing this up because I have the book in German, Ender Spiel, and I have the book in Spanish, El Juego de Ender. This I have read. I have actually read it in Spanish. Uh, I bought this in Spain, but I mean, like, just look. It's just I just find it interesting looking at like the sizes. I, I am surprised at how small the Spanish version is. I remember when I bought it, I was like, "Is it missing something?" But it's not. It's still the whole novel. It just it as as a as a translator, I just find it very fascinating. But anyway, um, this is also like in turn like with Dune in terms of science fiction. And I mean, hard science fiction is always supposed to like ask the big, bigger question of the human experience using technology and the future as a metaphor. So of course, like the question of genocide and I guess like uh, our view of ourselves, as, uh, our view of ourselves as a human race and our our place in this universe. You know, I mean, I haven't. I don't know. It's it's phenomenal. First off. <laughs> But uh, I will admit, like, the series, it does get a little squirrely. I mean, Ender's Game is just is just perfect, but... And even the prequel stuff, like Ender's Shadow was fantastic, and I also have Ender in Exile, which was also very good. But once you start getting into Speaker of the Dead, things get, get different. It's not necessarily the same story, in my opinion, so it was hard for me to, like, continue the series. But Ender's Game by itself is just fantastic. Enough for me to buy three copies of it. Last but not least, Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. Now I, oh man, like this in terms, this is one of the, my favorite magic systems out there. This is a music based magic system. So of course for me, like being a musician, in case you didn't know, uh, I was a concert pianist. I was a concert violinist. I was in choir growing up. Like I pretty much, if there was a reason for me to be on stage, I was on stage. So I, I just, this magic system was just something that really, really appealed to me in terms of Rhapsody being a namer and a singer, like knowing like the, 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 tr the true name of beings and being able to change them or change anything by changing its name. It's, it's just so, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So like uh, in terms of, I mean, in terms of world building, it's fantastic, but I will admit uh, in terms of info dumping, you don't necessarily see this sort of thing so much anymore because uh, if you, if you want to write fantasy and kind of be more successful, usually you kind of go into young adult or new adult, which is, the, the idea of new adult is still rather controversial. Some people say it doesn't exist. Whatever, I'm not going to go into it. But I will admit there are moments, there are pages of here where they just sit down and tell you the whole history of like the world or the religion or God knows what the, the, the worm, the earth, the, was it the worm of the earth or whatever that that's in there? The sleeping child. Oh my goodness gracious. Like I, during my rereads, I totally skipped that now. But at the, I remember at the time it was just so, it, it really just blew my mind. Uh, but I will admit, I always reread it because of the fantasy, because I am, you know, everybody talks about like their favorite book couples, Ash and Rhapsody. I stand by them like forever, forever more. I love them so much. So, and it was actually the first book I bought in German. Look at this beast. Look, look at this. Look at this. It's the same damn book. It's called Talk to des Windes, the Daughter of Wind, which is the other name of this book it's rhapsody daughter of i don't know child of blood just kidding but i do understand where they were going with this so in terms of of translation but this was the first book i bought this when i was 17. And i can't remember if i bought this in luxembourg or i bought it in tria in germany but i was in luxembourg visiting friends and sometimes we would we would go into tria so I don't remember if I, where I bought it necessarily, but I remember it because I just loved this book. I read this book when I was 15. I just still, you know, would reread it multiple times since then. And I saw this and I was like, oh my God, I just love it. Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. That was a long episode. That was longer than I anticipated. I am sorry, but I hope you've come away with some really fun books to read. I love every single one of these books. I have reread all of them numerous times. I actually not doing this video. I think I'm going to reread them again. <laughs>
<laughs> what about you? What are your favorite books that you have reread countless times? Or are you even a fan of rereading books? Because I know that's not the case with everybody. Let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know you like content like this and you want to see more. Uh, also, if you have any comments, questions, or topics you'd like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. The God Queen is available in both ebook and paperback. I have all the links for the book in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And that's it for today. Hope you had fun, and until next time, adieu!